15 years old when I was diagnosed, so I lost a lot of friends through it because I was just kind of, you know, it was hard to deal with me at times because I was very tired, I was very weak all the time, I couldn't go out. It just feels like a lot of attention was brought to me as opposed to my sister and brother and it was kind of sad for them. Like, and I missed out on the school because for three months I was in the hospital, which isn't very long compared to most. But my teacher would come every day, so I got to miss out on the relationships with my classmates. I remember, I remember, I wasn't almost allowed to start kindergarten on time because they didn't think I'd be ready to be around all the other kids. Because you know, kids are gross. We sneeze, cough all over each other, and whatnot. I mean, the biggest thing that you'll probably hear from most people is just a sense of normalcy. Um, you know, a lot of people's eyes are on you, especially if you went to school as a kid. Like almost everyone's asking you how you're doing and stuff, and. In a weird way, sometimes it can be less about just the individual. So for me, it was a lot of, in the initial phases of it, it was a lot of isolation from even my siblings because of how all the germs and things little kids have. And then uh, because I was around adults so much, I matured much, much faster than people around me. So while everybody else is over here, you know, playing Simon Says or whatever, I wanted to do bigger things. I wanted to sit and read actual big novels and things like that. So it put me kind of a, a bit of an outcast with my age group. Um, definitely took away from me getting my permit at 15, me hanging out with my friends. Like I never went to any high school parties or anything because I was just known as the cancer girl. And so that hurt a lot. Um, but, you know, it's kind of made me who I am today, I think. I remember not being able to go on play dates a lot. I remember I wasn't allowed to have a dog. I did sneak a cat in to our, our house once. And my mom heard it meowing, and she was like, what is that noise? And I was like, I don't know. I felt really isolated. I felt really kind of sad because a lot of people my age, you know, you want to go out and you want to play with them, but they didn't know how to deal with someone who was so mature for that age. Like, the attention's on you, not just for the person you are, but for what you're going through, and people kind of forget that sometimes. And that's something I've kind of noticed more as I watch other people go through it, but. It's something that's not really highlighted that much. And then uh, the nurses at Children's Mercy talked to my parents as soon as I was diagnosed and said, hey, this is a great place for her to go. It's a chance for a kid who is going through treatment and having the different lifestyle compared to the rest of their kids in their school, to be able to just be a kid, just have fun, just let loose, dance, party, swim, whatever, it's great. I think to me, Camp Quality is a place where kids with cancer can come um, and like Amato says, just be kids again. They see that they're not the only kid who's going through what they're going through. Um, they're able to make lifelong friendships. It's just a really special place, um, not only for the campers, but for the companions too. Um, I really think that camp quality is something that you have to be here to experience. It's so hard to put into words just how magical and special it is uh, until you actually get to be on the grounds and see the impact um, that this camp makes, not only on the campers, but on the companions as well. I always say camp quality is the happiest place on earth because it's, you know, whenever I was a camper, I really didn't have, I was diagnosed when I was my teenager. And so going through that um, in high school is kind of pretty hard and you lose a lot of friends going through that. So um, it was a place where I could find a family, kids my age to have fun with. And they like pretty much, their goal here is to make sure kids have the best week of their life. So it was definitely the best week of my life every time and now I feel grateful that I can offer that to some other kiddos. But 
<laughs> For me, it's like a second home. It's been a place that I have been able to grow and develop into the person that I am today. And they've always pushed me, but at the same time, if I'm going past what I should be personally, they will help me to confine what that is. Camp quality to me, it's a family away from your family. Um, it's just, it's literally the greatest week of the year, of my life, every year. Um, it's, it's literally just amazing. Like seeing these kids, um, there's not even words for it, it's just amazing. <laughs> to put it simply, Camp Quality is the greatest place on earth. Um, I look forward to it every year, it's my favorite week of every year and each year as it ends, I'm always looking forward to it the next year. Um, it's just kind of a place where not only kids can be kids again, but companions can also be kids again. My definition of camp quality, it's definitely what their little model is. It's letting kids with cancer be kids again, but it's more than just that to me. Because being a companion now, you see a whole other side of it. And these the kids, they just bring, it's definitely like that family orientation and just, I don't even know how to explain it. There's just so many things you have to experience for yourself to really understand the amazingness that goes on between just the campers and the staffs. And it is a family. That is one thing is it's a big, happy family. It's turned in my ear that campers are arriving. each other's stories or hear from each other so it's it's really neat.
This is my 25th year at Camp Quality. I've been coming since 94. Um, I was diagnosed in February of 94, and camp was in June, so I had four, four months of treatment. I was in treatment for two and a half years, but four months of treatment, and then got to join this place. So. My name is Jasmine Cousins. This is my 16th year at camp. So I was diagnosed when I was about one and a half, so I was really, really little, and I hadn't gotten to camp for the first time until I was about four, I think was the first year that I had went. Four or five would have been. So it was a little bit in between. I remember the medical staff uh, telling my mom and me about the camp. I remember the first time going on the bus and crying the entire time on the bus. And I remember a camper, her name was Janetta. She sat with me on the bus while I cried the entire time and she assured me it'd be okay. Um, and then when I got on the bus to go back home, I cried because I didn't want to leave. So it was kind of funny just how a little turnaround it was. Did not want to leave at all. My name is Sloan and, goodness, five, six, seven, I think this is my eighth year at camp as a camper. 
and a companion. So I was diagnosed when I was 15 and gosh, that was in October. And I've never been really the camp person at all. I like my own bed. I like going out to eat to dinner. I'm, I've tried a bunch of other camps before, but going through my chemotherapies, the nurses would always push and be like, you got to try camp quality sometime. You're gonna have so much fun. And um, so I was diagnosed in October and it took me some time to really think about camp. I actually, my first year I came late because I was just scared of meeting new people and the just camp experience in general. So uh, October and then camp is in June. So only a few months was I able to come. Get what you want first. Sleep, you can go 10 times deeper, feel 10 times more wonderful. Nod your head if you understand. Perfect. Now get ready to open your eyes on the count of three and feel like you had a 15, 20 minute nap. One, two, and three. Oh yeah, give a round of applause. Guys up there, where's the guys? Come on, come on. You're gonna do it? 18, yeah, 18, come on. I love it. Okay, now, everybody got shoes and sandals on right good because I take care of my volunteers. Everybody take your head, lean it over on the shoulder of the person to the left of you. Just lay down. Lay down. Oh, just take it. Not going to bite. Just lay down. There you go. I have just bought everybody tickets to your favorite amusement park, and you're on a brand new roller coaster ride. Nod your head if you understand. On the count of three with your eyes closed, you're on the world's safest, funnest roller coaster ride. On the count of three. To the right. To the left. You're going down another hill. Scream. Scream. On the count of three, you can realize you're now the world's greatest horse jockey. You're at the Kentucky Derby. On the count of three, your chair is going to become the saddle of your horse. And it's Kentucky Derby Day. And you must prove that you are the world's greatest horse jockey by winning this race. Nod your head if you understand. Nod your head. You must ride in this. You must ride in the Kentucky Derby hard to win. You must win. Here we go. On the count of three, with your eyes closed, you'll set up your chair, the saddle of your horse. You're going to jockey the horse into the gate and you're going to use your riding whip and get jockeyed into the gate you're going to hear the announcer say place your bets and they're off right and that horse you're coming around the first turn lean to the left lean to the left oh yeah you're on the back straightaway back straightaway wait a minute look at the jockey beside you on the count of three you're going to realize that you, when you open your eyes and remain hypnotized you're about to win a hundred billion dollars in the Powerball drawing, the first ever camp quality out of this world Powerball drawing. Open your eyes, look at me. Oh, Powerball? Oh, who else wants the Powerball? Oh, Powerball ticket? Excited? Powerball ticket right there. Who else wants a Powerball ticket? Here we go. One number left for the first ever camp quality out of this world Powerball drawing. There's going to be some high five party in here. A hundred billion dollars of Powerball number is number 12. You're gonna buy Blake Shelton. I'm gonna buy all the elephants in the world. Nice. What are you gonna buy with your money? I'm gonna pay off my student loans. I'm gonna get a ranch house, go the country, start a nice little farm, just be happy. Nice. That's gonna be good. You know, you're gonna pay off your student loans. Have you ever thought you could buy the college? 
Now we're talking. Now we're talking, baby. Now we're talking. The rest of the Round of applause. Feeling fantastic. And five. Wide awake. There they are, y'all. There they are. Let them hear it. Take a bow, y'all. Take a bow. Give it up for the stars of your show. And so thank you, Ted. While I was still a camper, I had uh, about 13 different companions, or no, I had nine companions in my 13 years. And it was my last companion that really, my last two that brought it home for me that I wanted to come back and really give back to the camp. And I'd always planned on doing something, but just their interactions with me made me want to be a companion. It made me want to, you know, really connect with the family of another kid like myself and show them that it's okay to be you to have fun.